Can you just go back to that, you, you programming? What what are some interesting technical challenges you had to overcome? You mentioned dynamic lighting, like create, you know, create this three dimensional world and and uh, try to figure out the puzzle of how you actually do that at a time when nobody, should, Carmack and you, <laughs> uh, doing this kind of thing. It's it's a totally open wild west. So, what are some interesting technical challenges you had to uh, you had to try to solve? There's a lot. Um... Some of them are visible on screen, um, and some are behind the scenes. Yeah. And still, require a lot of innovation. Um, all the graphical techniques were were really interesting challenges. Um, and Unreal Engine, uh, in those early days, went a lot further than the Quake Engine in building uh, environments using constructive solid geometry with a real time editor. And th that was a that was a really interesting technical challenge. You know, the idea is. Building is extremely tedious if you are only adding objects to the world. If you want to build a door, then you need to add like a dozen different pieces of door frames and add a bunch of different walls together to fit together in the right shape. It sure would be easier if you could just start with a wall and subtract the door out. Um, and so we had this way of adding geometry to the world and subtracting geometry, and the engine would perform all of the calculations on that. Um, and it, this is something that I'd been anticipating was possible for a long time, but I've when I finally got around to it, it took this 30 hour coding session um, to like figure out all of the special cases of the code that needed to be implemented to make that work. But uh, you know, in the course of 30 hours, I got constructive ge solid geometry up and running. I started doing a, a, a you know, like handed it to James Schmaltz uh, the next time we were together. And uh, it's like, okay, I think you're cheating here. So you create a giant torus <laughs> and then add another giant torus interlocked with it mm -hmm. um, and then subtracted a cylinder from it and um, like created this really advanced composite object uh, with just three operations. He was like, whoa, I can't believe this. It's like, yeah, <laughs> we figured it out. And, th and that was cool to see for the first time. It was probably the first time somebody had done constructive solid geometry in real time. Um, but it was also a really useful artist tool that all the artists appreciated and immediately began making use of. Can you actually speak to that, the 30-hour session? I mean, this is not, from everything I know about computational geometry, doing this kind of thing, from your perspective, is not, that's not easy. That's what is it? The uncertainty, the open questions involved, the, like, the, I mean, even just uh, on the algorithm front, how to do that efficiently. Uh, and then plus the usual programming thing of debugging, like suffering through the trickiness of it. And we don't have really, at that time, you don't have the tooling to really visualize everything that's going on really well. And you probably like using some crappy editor. I mean, there's just a lot of like friction here. So the the thirty hour session is one that's probably uh, rough. It's a rough one. Your your brain works in different ways, and depending on your your state, right? Uh, right. There are some things that re require really working on a problem fresh, um, where you've put together a bunch of logical pieces, and now you just need to write a whole lot of code to make it all work together, and you know plumb a whole lot of data between a whole lot of different algorithms. Um, but, you know, I think our brains have vastly more horsepower than we're able to directly access by thinking of what code to type next. Um, and, you know, after you've been working for a very long time, you, you can get into a sleep-deprived state where you have much, much more direct access to that low-level knowledge. <laughs> That's great, yeah. <laughs> because, you know, because you know, the, there are symptoms that are well-studied of sleep deprivation. One of them is um, short-term memory loss. And so you're working without, like, the easy recall of the code you just typed. Uh, but your brain is then freed to, to think about other problems. And, uh, and you know, I'd built up this intuition over a very long uh, period of time. You know, so the foundation for the subject is the binary space partitioning tree, this data structure invented by a computer science graphics researcher, Bruce Naylor. Mm -hmm. Carmack had picked up on that and uh, had used the technique in, in Doom uh, to really great effect. Um, and, and I'd picked up on that. And the Unreal Engine was using uh, this technique for all of its graphics and rendering, but it, uh, you know, it was just additive geometry everywhere. And it had a lot of overlapping polygons and was pretty inefficient. Um, you know, so I had the idea that if we had a BSP tree, there was a really efficient way to do constructive solid geometry. And it, to do that, you had to break down the ways that different pieces of geometry can fit together. I broke it down into like 14 different cases. Um, 
and most of them are pretty simple. Crank them out. Um, anyways, I got towards the end. You know, there were some pretty complicated things. Like, well, how do you deal with coplanar polygons? They're in the same plane, yeah. um, and pointing in the same direction versus the other direction. In what cases should you keep them? In what cases should you eliminate them? And and so on and so on to create really efficient uh, geometry output. And you know, uh, just uh, plowing through it. Uh, eventually, uh, through mostly uh, deduction, but some trial and error too. Like sometimes you just have to try the possibilities and see what works. Um, yeah, I, I cranked it out and it worked. And the next day, I came in like kind of weary, and I was like, "Oh wow, this actually did work. It wasn't just a dream." So you're considering the edge cases also. I mean, that's the problem with geometry is like there's probably just going to be all kinds of weird polygons that you have to. So you're like thinking, th you're imagining the edge cases and trying to see how do I not create inefficiencies in, in this algorithm while still considering the edge cases, allowing for the edge cases. Yeah, you know, it, it's pretty easy to write software that's like 99% correct. It's yeah. the 1% that's the really hard part and uh, where the devil lies in the details. 